Hi, I'm Paul Higgins and this is Paul Higgins Photography. So what we've got on the menu for today? Well, what I'm going to talk today about are, is a, a new purchase that I just made, which is this guy. Now, the focusing of the camera is not very good, so I'm just going to hold it up above my face. It's uh, the Sony A7C. So let's get on with it. So the A7RC, A7C, A7C. Why do so all Sony's have A7 at the beginning? Who knows? Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about this bad boy, which I recently purchased from, I don't know, I can't remember. Was it Adorama or B&H? I don't know, one of the two of them. Anyway, I'd like to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is go through a run through of the camera, show you the bits and pieces of the camera, what it looks like and everything. And then I'm going to do a little bit of my pros and cons of the camera. And we'll finally end up with some pictures. Actually, the pictures probably will be on while I'm doing the pros and cons. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll take a look at it and see what it's like. See you in the overview. OK, so here we're going to have a quick run through of what the A7RC, A7RC, the A7C looks like. So here it is, this is the front of the camera. Uh, as I mentioned on the, when I did the little bit of side by side, there's nothing on the front here. There's no control dials or anything like that. There's just the little light for the self timer. I think these are microphones. I think there's a microphone. Looking at the top, again, quite a simple layout here. It's got the exposure compensation that goes to three. As I mentioned, as I've mentioned, I think on other videos, these uh, I suppose compensations are very nice, but unfortunately they on, they only go to three. The, you can change the exposure compensation more than three stops. So if you're going more than three stops, you will have to do it another way with another button or s through the settings, something like that. It has a a, a mode dial. Unlike the A7R3, there's no lock on this one, so it just you can just you could accidentally tweak it if you if you <laughs> accidentally did that. There's the record button on the top here, which I don't use because I'm not a video guy. Where the focal plane is, and again some speakers, microphones uh, over here. If we go to the back and have a look at the back, I uh, the viewfinder's way over here. This is the diopter ad adjustment. And there's the se eye sensor, eye detect sensor. There's the menu. There's a uh, one uh, button here that you can customize. It has the uh, function display. I don't know what you call it, quick access, which is very nice. It has uh, a, a rear control dial. You also have the ability to be able to program this as a control dial as well. Um, it has four buttons here that you can program. So I have this as I leave these as, as they are. This is the drive mode. This is changing the display. This is changing the ISO. Uh, but I do change this one. This is one I use to change the steady shot focal length for manual lenses. So just because that's I, I use a lot of manual lenses. I think I may have shown this on the comparison, but this this camera does have a flip out screen. So it flips and it tilts and so you can have it that way like that or you can have it like this and then the screen's protected which is nice what else have we got here on the back uh not a lot else the little grip here is nice so let's move to this side here so on this side we have some ports which i can't get my fingers into at the moment let's do this one let's do this one so this one is the where the sd card goes uh, it's a, I, I think it's a UHS-2. I want to say it's a UHS-2. Then down here we have the headphone socket, the and the two USBs. Again, micro and reg and USB-C for charging, which is nice. And if I can get in here, this is where the microphone is. That's uh, that's all there is there, just the microphone. <laughs> so. But it has all the bits and pieces that you would need to do vlogging. I think on this side, there's nothing at all. Just the, just the contact point for contactless connection. The uh, displays are the same as they 
pretty much the same as they are on the A7, A7 R3. I have programmed this a little bit. I've tried to make the A7 R3 and the A7C have exactly the same settings so that when I move from one to the other, they are pretty much the same. So if I'd go back to the menu button here, uh, my, my menu is the same on both cameras too. And that's a quick overview of the, all the buttons and bits and pieces on the A7C. I'm actually doing reviews or overviews on both of these cameras, the A7R3 and the A7C. So I thought it might be good to just show you what they look like next to each other. So you can do it like a side by side thing on them. So there's the, uh, this is kind of like the front and uh, here's the, here's the bottom. So you can see that the grip on the A7R3 is a little larger than the one on the A7C. So those, uh, that's the bottom of them. Both have both take the same batteries, which is nice. You can also see that the A7R3 has a front control dial, which the A7C does not have. Going to the top, they are very quite, very quite similar, or quite similar. There's, uh, yeah, you can see they've both got the exposure compensation dials on them and uh, the on off switches and the flash and that's about it really same programming modes and everything like that on the top uh, we move around to the back of the cameras which is probably where there's the most difference really if you look here so you can see that on the uh, the a7c has the viewfinder off to the left which is not good for us left eye shooters <laughs> but anyway that's just uh, that's just how that is uh, there's a control dial on the back of the a7c uh, the joystick on the a7r3 and uh, pretty much everything the same uh, you know some things are different so there aren't as many function keys clearly on the a7c that's not what it's intended for and also you can see that the there's no real cap eye cap on the viewfinder uh, the only thing the other thing that's different is this so the as i mentioned in the videos of these cameras so this one just pops out but the a7C does actually have a tilty flippy screen, which is which is nice. Looking at the bottom, they're pretty much the you know pretty much the bottoms are the same. I think I might have showed those. The sides, so the sides are quite different. So this side on the A7C has both the SD card, which is this this guy here, and also the ports. And then on the A7R3. There are just the regular ports, which I explained in the video. And on the right hand side, uh, nothing at all on the A7C, uh, but just the, just the contact points for the non-touch. And that's it. So there you go. Quick view of the two cameras side by side. Okay, so in this in this part of the video, we're gonna go and probably have most of the video doing uh, previews or demos or something of my pictures that I took with the A7C. So what I'd like to do is go through the pros and cons. I've got them on my super duper little phone here. So let's go and uh, and kick this off. So pros. Uh, so the first one is it's small and light. I I've got light-ish. The reason I say light-ish is because of the the weight of the lenses. So a lot of the lenses on this guy are quite heavy. So so the camera itself is very light, but the when you slap the full frame lenses on it, can, they can get pretty heavy. But it's all bearable and it's all relative, and you know it's a full frame sensor, so you're getting a lot of benefits from that. There are some lighter alternative lenses. There's the kit lens, which comes with some of the A7. Are cameras and things like that, which is a 28 to 70 millimeter, 28 to 70 millimeter, and I think it's like a three point something to 5.6 ish or something like that. And the other one that's a nice alternative, which uh, to be honest, if I was buying this now, I mean, I bought this like a couple of two or three weeks ago, but if I was buying it now, I would strongly recommend buying the uh, Sony. What is it called? It's the um, 20 to 60 millimeter, 28 to 60 millimeter uh, pancake lens that comes with the, uh, that you can get as part of a kit. The other alternative is to get 
any of these lenses used. Those two lenses, the 28 to 70 and the uh, 28 to 60, are both incredibly light lenses. Not as fast as some of the other glass you can get, <clears throat> but they are actually very good. Um, and the 28 to 60 actually gets very good reviews. I've just bought one, it hasn't arrived yet, but I hear really good things about that. The other thing that's nice about that is it's cam uh, it, it just falls and it's very small. What I like as well about the A7C is that it's very lightweight and you can walk around with it. So you can just take it everywhere. It's small enough to be able to just carry around with you. It's not a huge camera like, you know, the A7R3 and other full frame cameras. It's one of the, I think it is the smallest at the moment uh, of all the full frame cameras. So it's, it's, it's nice for that. What else we got here? Yeah, and adding, adding on to that, uh, walking around lens, and I did put it on uh, with the right lens, so make sure that you've got nice light lenses to be able to use with it when you're walking around. Uh, one thing about it as well is, is it's weather sealed. So uh, one of the things that was a problem for me with my Micro Four Thirds cameras was some of the weather. Some of them are weather sealed, some of them aren't. You know, so it was always a. Ooh, it just kind of looks like it might be raining. Which one should I take? But with this, you just take the just take the A7C with you anywhere. So. A nice, a nice option there. It does have the latest autofocus tracking, which I found was fantastic when I was playing around with it a little bit earlier on, a lot better than some of the earlier. <clears throat> so I've just bought an A7R3. So the tracking and stuff like that is much better. The autofocus stuff is much better on the A7C. So that's cool. I like the flippy screen. That's very nice to have. I don't necessarily know how much I'd use it, but it is it is good if you need it so that's a that's another good another good thing there let me have a look here what else we got uh the other thing that uh really i like is i've i bought the a7r3 i rented an a7r3 i really like it bought the a7r uh, bought the a7c and then went you know i should get an a7r3 as well so i have an a7r3 and an a7c and they're pretty much interchangeable because basically they they both the menus are the same everything is the same on them you know where the button the buttons are slightly different but a lot of a lot of the overall behavior and settings and everything between the two of them is is very similar so i can switch very quickly from one to the other and not go oh, which menus are different which what do i have to do here so the the crossover with the a7 a7r3 is really really good don't forget as well uh that with the sony's with the Sony full frames, you can use uh, adapters for legacy glass. So I have quite a lot of legacy Nikon lenses. So I have some dumb adapters for like uh, for Nikon lenses that I have. They don't autofocus, so everything's manual. But it is that there is a there is a lot of options. So I have three adapters for the A7 series cameras. I have the um, a Nikon F mount adapter I also have an m42 screw adapter for a really old you know screwing lenses from the good old days of single lens reflex cameras and I also have an M I want to say it's an m39 which is for rangefinder cameras you know like Leicas and and those feds and Zorkies and things like that so I, I, I have three the only thing about adapters are, as I've probably mentioned as you've probably seen is you need to make sure that they focus to infinity the ones I had did not so I had to do a bunch of stuff to sort of adjust them calibrate them so that they they do focus to infinity but it gives you it open opens up a wide range of things that you can lenses that you can get access to legacy glass so that's cool uh, it's got the same menu system as the a7r3 some people think that's not very good because it's a, a pain in the armpits to navigate around I think once you've got used to it it's okay and having two cameras that have the same menu system is actually quite good because you don't you know I had some Olympus cameras and I had some Lumix cameras and that was quite tricky to be able to sort of flip between the two so that so you know same menu systems is good uh, now for the a7c only a couple of cons that actually may be another one here but so the, the first one is it's got the old menu system I just said that was a positive and, and frankly who cares you know I don't I, you know, I don't I don't I think if you're using a complicated camera or a camera you need to learn learn where the, lens, where the menus are so I, I don't really see that as a problem the viewfinder 
some people mentioned about it being a little small i do find that sometimes a little bit of a challenge with the glasses i i see that there are some aftermarket uh lens viewfinder cover things which fit into the hot shoe so i may or may not try one of those out but that's a it's not been a huge problem to me shall we say not really anyway so, so that's not, not really a, a big con. And the, the other one, as I mentioned, I think in the videos was around the, the uh, and it's on both, cam both Sony cameras, all Sony cameras. The exposure compensation goes to plus or minus three on the dial, but you can actually go five, it might even be seven or eight if you want to. So you can't, you can only set plus or minus three stops with the adjust, uh, the compensation. The other thing as well, which I don't really, um, with the uh, exposure compensation dial, I, I really don't feel like the the only having one uh, control control wheel is really a problem. I, I you can use the wheel on the back, the pad on the back, as a, an extra one if you need it. But for me, for walking around camera, I think that there's enough dials, enough buttons, enough customizable stuff. I have it set up for back button focus. It all works very well. So in conclusion, I think it's a fantastic camera. If you want a walking around camera and you're a Sony, big Sony camera shooter, it's a nice little addition. If you're just looking for a nice camera that's easy to carry around, that opens up the using full frame, it's also great for that too. So all in all, I think it's a fantastic camera and I'd strongly recommend it. Drop comments below if you have any thoughts or anything. And that's it for me for today. So I'm Paul Higgins and this is Paul Higgins Photography. See you later.